It's another debt-free Friday. So excited. Hope you guys are having an awesome week. This week's debt-free Friday, I want to talk about uh, a plethora of things. Basically, being content, not comparing yourself to others, and not feeling like you have to prove your wealth. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand with spending less than you earn, which is what I talked about last week. If you haven't watched that Debt Free Friday, I will insert a card here. One of the quarters. I always forget which way to point. But I will insert a card to that. So go ahead and watch that because this one may um, not make sense to you. So last week, again, we talked about spending less than you earn. And this week, you know, I really want to talk about contentment. It's important that we pretty much be content where we are regardless of how close we are to our financial goals or personal goals or any anything. You have to be really grateful for what you have right now. And I talked about that, about the secret to wealth. I will insert a card here to that. But basically, we live in a society that constantly makes us feel like we're discontent, right? You see it in advertisements everywhere. Every time you go to the mall, you know, you didn't know you needed anything until you actually went to the mall and you feel like you need everything that you saw, right? Um, and then when you watch television, I think social media plays a huge role in that. Um, social media and kind of like peer pressure. You know, you know, people always want to present their best selves or everything that they love about their life, you know flashing it, not flashing it, but just showing it on social media. I get it. You're happy. You want to post everything that's happy. But in reality, you know, you don't know what those people went through to get those things. You know, again, with peer pressure, same thing. Not everybody makes may understand your uh, financial goals. Some people may think it's extreme to actually spend less than what you earn. And some people may think it's foreign to do that or to just be content with what you have. You no, know, it really makes you then compare yourselves to others and you kind of go into this downward spiral. And my pastor talked about it last week, like a couple of weeks ago about this, and he's really good at explaining it. And I want to insert a clip of the uh, sermon here. And please don't get turned off if you're not a Christian. I think this will be beneficial to anyone. But I want you to watch this a few minutes of it right here. Spend less than you earn, you're going to have to learn how to be content. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, you just, content is going to have to be the core. And there's a little something that, that, that I've done in my own spirit. And I don't know if this is helpful. I'm going to try and do it quickly, too quick, more quick than I should. But, but I know that I'm going to have to learn how to live content. And, and what I'm very aware of is, is that this world draws me over to discontent. And, and, and Ron's right. The, the world is designed to help me be discontent. But I also know that, that I'm at risk of being complacent. And, and I want to figure out, how do I live my life to be content without being complacent? And, and how do I live without being discontent? And there, there are things that, that, that God has to help me become to be content. And the first one is grateful. So I, you're, I, I literally have this drawn out in my, my own journal, and this is the stuff I navigate. God, help me be grateful, because contentment doesn't mean I'm complacent, I don't care to go anywhere else, and I don't eventually desire to want more, but it means that what I have, I'm grateful for. And I'm telling you, I can be drawn into discontent. And, and that creates a drivenness in me. And this drivenness can overtake me. Sometimes it can overtake you into entitlement. Sometimes it can overtake you into exhaustion where you overwork and you overextend. And you become all about, I got to have more, 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 more. Because you'll never get happy with what you have. If, if, if you love money, you'll never have enough. And, and, and I, and I got to pull back from that and have a gratitude. But simultaneously, I, there, there's a way where I can just almost give up and become passive and say, well, I have no desires. I have no goals. I, I have no aspirations. And that, that's not healthy either. There's an, uh, there's an ingratitude that gets settled in a complacency that's unhealthy. And we end up in extremes rather than truly be centered in contentment. Let me tell you another thing God's tried to help me learn to do, and that is celebrate others. Listen, celebrate others. For me to be content, I'm going to have to be okay. When other people get things I don't have and may never have, i got to be able to celebrate them. Good for you. I, man, I'm happy for you guys. Sincerely. Be because coveting 
Jealousy, envy is a burden, a battle for all of us. God talks about it as the 10th commandment, don't covet. This was thousands of years ago. Why? Because we struggle. We have a discontent when somebody else does well. We get caught in this comparison trap. And if you get caught in this comparison trap, it will take you down. See, discontent is going to cause you to compare, and now you're going to compete with everybody else. And when you compete, you think, I should have this. Man, I could get sucked into that. Man, why do they have that? I should have that. You, you slide over that, you can't celebrate anybody. But on the other hand, I, I can get stuck over here, and there's another comparison trap. And on this side of the comparison trap, and that ha this happens among us as well. This is one where I say, oh, you know what? I'm just a victim. I'm not going anywhere anyway. I, I, I can't do anything about it. And you know what? They shouldn't have it either. And, and we end up in our culture saying, I should have it or they shouldn't have it. Anything but right here in contentment. You get drawn into either side. So for me to be content, I've got to be grateful. I've got to be able to celebrate others and deal with this coveting, envy, jealousy kind of thing in me. And, and then I have to commit to honor God. And when I say honor God, I mean the very five things that Ron laid out. See, because the way I want to experience or get more by the grace of God is I want to do it by being content, meaning I'm grateful, I can celebrate, and I'll honor those principles. And honoring those principles is the only way to get more in a way that the more is properly understood and matters. And otherwise, I'm going to be over here and I'm going to dishonor God. I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I can't honor God's five principles. Or I'm going to be on this side. I can't. I'm going to dishonor God's five principles. You know why? Because I'm trying to get ahead. Hey, you're always excusing yourself like I'm not in a good enough place to honor God's principles. Oh, oh, I'm go trying to go ahead to get honor God's principles. And all along the way, we miss out on what it means to be content. Because I'm going to tell you something. Before you ever master your money, you have to master your emotions. So he did really good with that, right? I mean, it just spoke to me. So it was like, it just spoke to me. I just, I loved every second of that because I think it's so, so important for us to be content. And I have to always remind myself, especially when I want more and more and more, or I want um, something bigger or something better, I have to remind myself to just be thankful and pick out the things that you're happy about uh, in your life. And I think one of the biggest things that he talked about and that was, celebrating others you know and i think that was his nice way of saying not to hate on other people and i think uh it's so important to do that and it can get hard especially when someone else gets something that you really like or you want to you feel like you deserve <clears throat> it can get hard not to celebrate others but you know if i'm being completely transparent here Celebrating others has never been an issue for me. I love for everybody to succeed. Um, all of my friends, all of my family, I want us all to win. I've, I've never had that issue, but I think some people really do. And um, it's important to really celebrate others. But to be honest, where I have an issue with is feeling like I have to, I don't know, prove my wealth to people, right? And it's like, you're probably like, well, what are you talking about? Like, you know, for instance, my car is 10 years old and I feel like sometimes, well, people are going to think I'm poor if I have this car or that I'm not wealthy or, and then you have to, and then I ask myself, well, who cares, right? Who cares what other people think? Nobody knows, you know, your financial plans or what you, uh, how you, what you succeed at financially or where you, where you struggle. Nobody really knows. People always judge on the outside, you know, and I, you know, people are always asking us, you know, for instance, we have a basement that we've been wanting to finish for ever since we moved into the house, but I knew that it was going to take a long time because finishing basements are not cheap and we, you know, we save cash for major purchases and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, um, if I wanted to, I could go out, we, my husband and I can go out and get a line of credit on our home and finish the basement like that, right? And then people will be like, wow, you got your basement finished, that's so cool, you know, wow, how'd you do it? But then I wouldn't be true to myself. I would be putting our financial goals at risk because I want to go out and prove that I could afford to get my basement finished. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just like, that's something that I struggle with and that I'm, I've gotten so much better. As I've gotten older, I've gotten so much better with that. Just really basically not caring what other people think. You could think whatever you want about me. Um, Another thing I want to circle back on is uh, the peer pressure and social media making you feel like you're not content. Uh, I think YouTube is big on that. I mean, we see hauls all the time. Don't get me wrong, I post hauls on my channel too, uh, grocery hauls primarily, um, or Christmas toy hauls and stuff like that. Um, and I, I definitely don't post hauls trying to convince people to go out and buy 
everything that I post. I just do it to share because I know a lot of people enjoy those types of things. But YouTube, you can get caught up. You can just get caught up seeing all these makeup hauls, especially, and I'm not trying to bash anybody at all, but you know, it's very, very prevalent in the beauty community. I'm um, like, wow, I want that bag, or wow, look at that makeup palette. Let me go out and buy that. You know, it's important not to get caught up in that. You know, it's nice to watch from afar, but you know, really ask yourself, do, you, do I really need this? For instance, uh, a YouTuber, her name is Makeup by Tiffany D. Uh, love her channel. I've been um, subscribed to her for uh, years now. Uh, just watching her family grow. I think she's a nice person. Uh, she recently said how she got a new car. And her new car was a GL, a Mercedes-Benz GL 550, which is like my dream car. I would love to have that car. Then I make me feel like, wow, maybe we should go out and get a loan and just get this car, this uh, a GL 450, uh, a seven passenger SUV, maybe I should just go out and get it. But then, you know, I have to tell myself, no, mm -mm, that's not the plan. Got to save cash for that car. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's fine that my car, I love my car. I, it still looks nice to me, still runs great. Knock on wood. <laughs> I have no issues with it. I'm thankful for that car. I'm thankful that we paid for that car. You know, it's, it's paid for in full, uh, which is awesome. It's so freeing not to have a car debt. Cause I think, you know, I've mentioned this before, but you know, car debt or car loan debt is basically one of the major things that in student loans that keep the middle class in the middle class and it makes you hard it makes it hard to accumulate wealth so i'm not i'm not bashing makeup by tiffany d at all or you know I'm not saying i don't know how she paid for her car you know the bottom line is this you don't know how those people got those things right so it's important that we don't compare ourselves or we don't feel like we have to prove anything to anybody basically be you stay true to your financial goals and when you feel like you're getting tempted go back to what your financial goals are for the year i have posted a video about that too i will link that here go back to what your financial goals are for the year and kind of put it all in perspective for yourself that's pretty much what I wanted to share this week. Thank you guys so much for watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button right below this picture and check out my previous video here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.